is Father Bob Warren of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. Thank you for listening to this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour radio show. The Friars' popular Ave Maria Hour was first brought to the radio airwaves in 1939, recorded in New York City and on the mountainside grounds at Graymoor, a home in Garrison, New York. These timeless classic stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints came to life each week through dramatic reenactment by professional actors and actresses. You know, friends, Christ once said, Do not hide your treasure under a bushel. In saying this, he meant share your gifts, share your talents. The Friars of the Atonement feel the message in these broadcasts remains as powerful and timely as when they were originally aired, and we are so happy to be able to share them with you today. To learn more about the missions and ministries of the Friars of the Atonement, I invite you to visit our website, www.atonementfriars.org. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour. Blessed are they that mourn. I am Father Joseph. I should like to tell you about Thomas, whose life became intertwined with mine in the year of our Lord, 1386. In a public garden in the city of Florence is where we met once again. I sat there feeding the birds with bits of cheese and pieces of bread that I broke from a loaf in my hand. Come, little bird, come, come, here's food. Come on. Come on, little bird. Come. Come here now. Here now. What do you want? What are you doing? The bread. The cheese. I'm starved. Well, you don't have to steal. Don't preach to me. You mustn't scare these creatures. Just just hand over the bread. You look exhausted. I don't need your pity. I need, I need, I need food. Here. And I have some fruit also. You are welcome to it. We'll get some wine from the inn on the Via Della Rosa at the park gate. Why? Why are you so good to me? I don't want anybody to be kind to me. Have you done something you're ashamed of? Tell me, my son. I can't. I can't trust anyone. You're afraid of the police, aren't you? What? Why should I be? But you must have a reason. But I didn't do it. If you say so. You don't even even know what... I believe you if you say you didn't do it. That's between you and your conscience. Do I get the bread or a sermon? Come now, sit down. Please. Care to join me in prayer? I don't. You really are one of God's most unhappy creatures. So young a man with so heavy a burden. Come now, eat. You don't mind if I say a prayer? What do I care what you do? Father in heaven, we thank thee for all thy bounty and your grace in bestowing upon us all that we are about to receive. I haven't see. eaten in days. And you haven't slept? And the police are after you. In your state of exhaustion, how far do you think you'll get? I've been, I've been running since they found the girl at the river. They say I did it. I didn't. I didn't. I tell you. Then there are other things you did commit? Bad things? No, I didn't say that. And you can't, you can't get me to tell you anything. You'll get nothing out of me. Not if you don't wish to tell me. Can I, can I take the rest of that cheese and the fruit for later? Look, come home with me, my son, and rest. And I'll prepare a real meal for you. Well, don't, don't, don't you? Don't you want to know about the girl on, on the riverbank? I know you didn't do it. It's horrible. What they did to her. God rest her innocent soul. You know about it? I celebrated the Mass at her funeral. Then you know whom the police hunt? Yes, the son of Balachi, the butcher. I know you, Thomas. Your father and mother are good, hard-working people. They raised you to know God. Don't preach to me. I did for many years, when you were a little boy. I don't remember. 
Well, then I failed you. Failed? Obviously, my teaching had no effect on you. You've abandoned your work at the butcher shop. You seldom come home. You prefer the company of the Duke Parchesi. Well, how else would a butcher's son better himself? You call it bettering yourself when you associate with a notorious wastrel? He is a nobleman. I am nothing but a butcher's boy. But Jesus was a carpenter. And Peter, a fisherman. Well, the Duke considers me a personal friend. That's more important. Are you proud of that? Everyone in Florence says the Duke Marchese buys his friends. They become the tools of his evil. The Duke is a powerful man in Florence. These are dangerous opinions even for a priest. He has heard them from my own lips. The Duke has been known to punish his enemies, and even if you are a priest, it might not matter... Have you helped him punish his enemies? I, I tell you, I am innocent. I could not do this dreadful thing. I know, my son, because I know your father and mother, and I know you. I've been searching for you these three days. I've been waiting for you. Wait, waiting? What, what are you talking about? I used to bring you with the other altar boys to this park, this very spot. Don't you remember the happy outings we had? I, I've forgotten all that. I knew you'd be hungry. A hunted man looks for familiar places and faces. And he thinks back to happier childhood days and hiding places. I prayed that you'd come here. Oh, Father Joseph. Yes, my son. Father Joseph, you, you, you waited here for me. Yes. Thank heaven you came. And I said I would tell you nothing. But you, you know everything. Tell me. Tell me about it, my son. Tell me. I'm sick at heart. I did many things for Duke, for Casey. But not to dishonest. The Duke knows how to flatter. He, he challenged me to play mischievous pranks on his opponents, to steal the Count Corriero's seal from the castle library and forge a document. Drug an opponent's horse so the Duke might win the annual race at the fair. And then the acts, they, they became more villainous. I, I was caught in this net. I, I enjoyed the roistering, the lavish purses. I, I even boasted the police could not hold me. They came to know me, Balachi, the butcher's wild boy. I enjoyed the notoriety. God forgive me. And now you see the arrow. Oh, this last, this last horrible, horrible thing. I, I, I refused. The Duke laughed and chided me that this was a, an exploit worthy of a full-grown man's metal. I refused. That was a week ago. And suddenly I, I heard the terrible thing was done. The police blamed me at once. I rushed to the Duke's home. He alone could, could set the police right and, and, and prove, prove my innocence. But he wouldn't receive me. His footman slammed the door in my face. I was so enraged, I, I knocked and I pounded till my, my knuckles bled. It is a crushing experience to find your fate, however misplaced, destroyed. Oh, I wandered through the streets. I found my, my way to the river. I wanted to drown myself. And then I thought, no, they will say I did it because of my guilty conscience. And now, now I began to be afraid. But well, that helps. It helps to be afraid. It shows you still care for life, your own and others. Well, I, I hid in doorways. I heard the whispers. People spoke of the, the ghastly deed, the, the girl at the river and the butcher boy. I, I, I wanted to scream out, I'm innocent, but I, I dared not. And then hunger began to gnaw at me. It brought you out of hiding. Thank God. All is not lost if you can still thank the Lord. Oh, all is lost. The police won't believe me. And the Duke will not acknowledge me. My son, while you were in hiding, your father was not idle. He knows his son could not have committed this crime. He asked my help. 
And we have uncovered enough evidence to prove the Duke's involvement and your innocence. You mean... You mean actual proof? Eyewitnesses. Come, my son. Together with God's good grace, we will see to it that justice is done. Come. <laughs> Come in. Father Joseph. Brother Thomas. Welcome, Brother Thomas. I'm delighted to see you. Sit down. Shall we have some wine? What? Perhaps you will not refuse me as you did that time in the park, remember? Oh, I can never forget. I was reborn that day. But uh, forgive me, I must refuse you again. I've continued my penance all these years. Everyone has heard of you in Florence, of your penance, and I have followed your career all these years. Well, my my evil deeds can never be forgotten by me, though they may be by others. And yet as the years slip by, I begin to feel that uh, it, uh, it all happened not to me, but to a, a different person, to Thomas... Balaji, a butcher's son. Well, now soon God will remove him completely from your sight. And you will be as you are, Brother Thomas of the Franciscans. With all my heart, I wish I could believe that. Oh, you will. Oh, you are, you are my dearest friend still, and you don't, you don't chide me for failing to write you more often through the years. No matter. I've watched your progress. I was proud of your being made master of novices. You acquitted yourself nobly. Well, noble can never apply to me. <laughs> you you will forgive me for not coming to you. You could not. In the midst of, as you say, reaching toward Jesus, I, I could not help you. Well, no one could. It was between the Lord and me. But now, why have you asked to see me? Well, I must make a decision, an important one. You helped once, and I know the choice was right. I'm 45 years old now. I I can spend the rest of my days in penance, self-denial, and prayer. Is it enough? I am called to God in action. Friar John Strancone wishes me with him on his mission of uh, institution reform in the kingdom of Naples. And you hesitate? Well, can I tell others to reform? I, who am clothed in everlasting sin. If all servants of God felt as you do, sin would have no challengers. Well, they have not sinned as grievously as I have. Who is without sin? Do you think a priest feels he is completely free of sin when he exhorts his parishioners to come unto Jesus? A priest can say no more than, fellow sinners, follow me. Well, how can I face anyone and say, fellow sinners, follow me? How can I, when I should be saying truthfully, look upon me and my sins that are so much more evil than yours and come with me under the cross? Then say it, my son. Say exactly that. I who have sinned much worse than you, I have seen the light. Follow me. And with me, you too shall see the light. I who have sinned much worse than you. I have found the light. Follow me, and you too shall see the light. For there is the glory of heaven waiting for you. Brother Thomas, exultant voice of exhortation became familiar in Naples. Wherever he spoke, people were caught up in his fervor and imbued with his love of God. A number of miracles were credited to him. For six years, Brother Thomas worked with Friar John Strancone in Naples. In the year of our Lord, 1420, by the authority of Pope Martin V, Brother Thomas was sent to oppose the heretical Fraticelli, 
in Tuscany. During this campaign for God, Thomas established a number of new foundations. Then he was confronted with another turning point in his life. Friar Albert, you honor me by your coming here. I have uh, heard of the great mission the Holy Father has set for you. It is I who am honored. I come to you because I have much to learn from you. To try to reunite those of the Oriental Church with the Roman Catholic Church is a great challenge. Too great a task for one man. A man of meager talents at best. Your scholarship, Friar Albert, your, your knowledge of Oriental languages, your diplomacy and many missions for the Pope are, are no meager talents. You are much too modest. How old are you, Brother Thomas? Forgive my directness. You see, my reputation for diplomacy is without foundation. <laughs> I fear the reason you ask me this. Come, Brother Thomas, you fear no man, only God. And long ago that fear turned to love. Friar Albert, I'm not a young man. You are a vigorous man. You thrive on work, especially God's work. You have a special gift for planning and organizing, and none can equal your fervor. When you speak, you move rocks. I still have my penance. You must know that if you know anything of me. I know that, too. But you are stronger than many men who are years younger than you. Oh, God has been merciful to me. And now he calls you to his service. Yes, in a faraway wilderness, Syria, Persia, these are places one reads about. I never, I never dreamed I might be going. God is there. And ours is the rewarding mission of opening the eyes of Syrians, Persians, Turks, dissidents, to see God where he is. I know nothing of these ancient languages. I shall train you and the other friars in our company. While we take the long route, we shall plan and work and study. Brother Thomas, this... We shall be close to the land where our Lord Jesus was born, lived, and gave his life on the cross for our sins, where his disciples went out to do his bidding. How can I do less? I have no right to refuse. The campaign in Syria by the group of friars headed by Friar Albert and including Brother Thomas proved very successful. When they reached Persia, Friar Albert commissioned Brother Thomas with three other friars to go to Ethiopia. They encountered many hardships. Three times they were captured by Turks, who treated them most cruelly. Have the infidel approach. Now, my Christian friend, these chains are a torture to you. You have brought all this, shall we say, discomfort on yourself. I have warned you twice before. You are not to preach to my subjects these inflaming stories of your God. My God is your God. Call him by any name or through any prophet. But you speak only of your prophet. Him you call the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. A fable. A falsehood you must not tell my people. A truth you fear my telling your people. A dead man risen after three days is a corpse. How can you believe that? No matter how crudely you put it, it is the truth, as written in the gospel. Lies, lies. Yet you believe your prophet Muhammad was risen into heaven? Twice before we put you to the torture to stop your deceit. Have you forgotten I released you on condition? You would not preach to the people. I never promised I would not preach. I cannot promise. 
I am bidden by my oath to the vicar of Christ at Rome to spread the gospel wherever I go. I shall speak of Jesus to my dying day. Then this is your dying day. I have sent word to your pope at Rome, your holy vicar, through your precious friar Albert. If the pope treasures your life and your preaching, let him send me a ransom in gold. It shall be your vicar's choice not mine. If he cares so little for you, then he condemns you. If the ransom does not arrive by nightfall, then tonight, when the moon rises, my swordsman will claim your head. You don't understand. They cannot pay such ransom. And I am prepared and quite willing to die. I cannot comprehend your eagerness. To sacrifice your life. It is Christ's way, in atonement for all our human sins, even yours, Your Excellency, this day. Even a dog has the instinct to save himself. But I will save myself, my eternal soul, far more worthy than this worn-out flesh and bones. And I shall find it in my soul to forgive even you. You see, Christian, your friar Albert and your great father in Rome have deserted you. No, no. They have entrusted me to God's will. And I go with joy in my heart, serving him with my last breath. And with all my heart and soul, I forgive you. If your Christ is here and has atoned for all your sins, let him save you from the executioner's block. Hear me. In my youth, I sinned greatly. I committed evil. Jesus came to me to save me. He gave me the light to see him as he is. I prayed. I denied myself all pleasures of the flesh and mourned the sins of my youth. I followed a course of penance all my life. But not, not until this moment have I felt that God showed me the true way to atone for my sins. And has comforted me. I go to meet my Lord willingly and joyfully. I forgive and thank your excellency and all who have brought me to this. I am privileged to give my life as Jesus gave his. Believe in him, all of you, and you shall be saved. Come unto him. And you shall come into the kingdom of heaven. Once and for all, I will stop your preaching. Kill him! Kill him! Wait! Your Excellency, our Holy Father has sent you gold for the life of Brother Thomas. Friar Albert, I shall never understand why God refused the sacrifice of my life when he's accepted the martyrdom of so many in the name of Jesus. Shall we question his infinite wisdom or his compassion, my friend? He has refused my sacrifice. I must continue my atonement. Perhaps he wishes you to continue to serve him on earth. Oh, I know he does. You are ill, Brother Thomas. First you must rest. These eight difficult years in the Orient, the tortures you have undergone, are more than most men could have borne. You must return to Florence, rest, and perhaps serve out your days there. No, my friend. I shall continue on to Rome and plead with the Holy Father for permission to return to the Orient again. It is there I offer my life to our Lord again. On the way to Rome, at 
Reate. Brother Thomas was taken ill. He died that October 31st, 1447. 